We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? Greetings and welcome to another last day events as they are being fulfilled very, very rapidly. We are living in a time when we can see now and hear at the same time the boldness of the elites, the boldness of the New World Order agenda, the boldness of the Great Reset. What they used to hide or to do in secret are now being revealed openly. They are not hiding what they plan on doing to humanity. The enemy of soul, as Revelation chapter 12, verse 12 tells us, knoweth that he has but a short time. He is no longer doing things in secret, like in secret societies, like in signs and symbols. They are now telling us, if you are paying attention very openly, what they plan on doing. They are even calling now with boldness to bring back the Catholic Crusades. What does that mean? And also the Inquisition. What does that mean? Well, think about the St. Bartholomew Massacre. What they have done to God's faithful martyrs that lived in time past. And this is what they are planning to do in these last days. They know that the majority have been brainwashed and are ready to even execute those that they think and believe and have been brainwashed to think that those are the ones that are causing the pestilences, the calamities that are ravaging our world, even the wars. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father our God which art in heaven, Lord, we need boldness like the disciples. As we can see that the world is very bold now in what they are doing. They are no longer hiding the things that that was once being called conspiracy theories. So Father, as the disciples ask and pray for boldness, we pray also that we will pray for that and that you will give it to us so that we may, number one, lift up the name of Jesus and also so that many will understand the wickedness of Babylon and will come out of Babylon. May Jesus be lifted up. In his name we pray. Amen. One more time, brothers and sisters, in the book of Acts, chapter 4, when the religious leaders, Pilate, came together and Herod, the world came together and to stop them from preaching in the name of Jesus. Those disciples did not hide from knowing Jesus at that moment, but they pray and ask for God to give them boldness in these last days. We have a message. That is the third angel's message. And if we were to read Revelation chapter 18, verse 1, and we find the boldness of some that God will use in these last days. Revelation 18 verse 1 says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, it says, and the earth was lightened with his glory. That is the kind of boldness that we must have. We have power that is available to us, just like that woman with the issue of blood knew that there was power in Jesus Christ so she reached out by faith and touched the hem of his garment and brothers and sisters as I mentioned they are very bold in what they are doing even if you are not making a declaration a public declaration to join their agenda to accept the pestilence to take the sorceries of Babylon and even with this war in Ukraine if you are not taking the side 
of Ukraine. They are coming after you as well. Case in point, notice on the screen. This tells us here from NBC6, South Florida. Silence is betrayal. Elena Svetolina demands, notice the word demands, tennis association ask players if they support Russia-Ukraine war. Ukrainian tennis star Elena insists the associations ask Russian and Belarusian players three questions. And what are those questions? About supporting the crisis before allowing them to compete. She says, we notice that some Russian and Belarusian players are at some point vaguely mentioned, notice the word vaguely there, vaguely mentioned the war, but never clearly stating that Russia and Belarus started it on the territory of Ukraine. In other words, to get access to this new world order, to the Great Reset, you must make a public declaration that you are on their side, that you are willing to bow down to the image. Oh, brothers and sisters, do you see what's happening here? Let's continue. It goes on to say, article goes on to say, three questions that she urges the tennis association ask each Russian and Belarusian tennis player. Number one, do you support Russia's and Belarus invasion in Ukraine's territory? And as a result of that, the war started by, the, by those countries. Number two, do you support Russia's and Belarus military activities in Ukraine? Number three, do you support Putin's and Lukashenko's regime? If applicable, she says, we demand to exclude, and what else? Ban Russia and Belarusian athletes from competing in any international event as Wimbledon or Wimbledon already done. Think about the last days, brothers and sisters. Think about what Jesus described in Matthew chapter 24. Think about what we also read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Who will be the target in these last days? It will be God's people. It will be God's people that they will ban because they refuse to bow to the image. Just like the three Hebrew boys refused to bow to the image. And so they were banned. Yay! They were condemned to death. And this is what is coming on the horizon. Well, it's already here. For Seventh-day Adventists, this is nothing new. This happened in time past, especially against the Waldensians. Notice on the screen what we read here. Acts of the Apostle, pages 84 and 85. Every indignity, reproach, and cruelty that Satan could instigate human hearts to devise has been visited upon the followers of Jesus, and it will be again fulfilled in a marked manner for the carnal heart is still at enmity with the law of God and will not be subject to its commands. The world is no more in harmony with the principles of Christ today than it was in the days of the apostles. The same hatred that prompted the cry, crucify him, crucify him, the same hatred that led to the persecution of the disciples still works in the children of disobedience. The same spirit which in the dark ages consigned men and women to prison, to exile, and to death, which conceived the inquisite torture, or I should say exquisite torture, of the what? The Inquisition, which planned and executed the massacre of St. Bartholomew, and which kindled the fires of Smithfield is still at work with malignant energy in unregenerate hearts. And brothers and sisters, 
at the end of this message, I'm going to quote for you an article. And this article is about a state representative and also a conservative Protestant. And that conservative Protestant is calling for the exact same thing that we just read here. He's calling for a return to Catholicism, to the crusade, to the inquisition with boldness. They are saying these things now. Listen carefully. Keep in mind, as I read the next article for you, Revelation 13, beginning in verse 15, all the way down to verse 17 tells us. Listen now. This says, what? A one world banking system. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse and trig, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling what now? Money and its assurance. You won't have a choice when the globalists implement their great reset plan to rule every country's currency on the planet. It will be a what? A cashless society with worldwide domination. As we've been covering these things for the past few weeks, with boldness, they are telling you that we must transform, or I should say, retransform humanity, re engineer humanity, the economy, every aspect of life. One more time, as they said here, the globalist plan with the Great Reset is to rule every country's currency on the planet. It will be a cashless society with worldwide domination. Now, again, there's nothing new under the sun. Listen to what James Madison said. History records that the money changers, remember money changers, have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its insurance. Those words are from James Madison long time ago. And we are seeing those things being fulfilled today using the economy, the money, as James tells us, to bribe, to bring about uh, slavery one more time. Speaking of the World Bank, notice the next one here. This says, World Bank wants to end car sales. For what reason? To combat climate change. They want to do what? They want to ban, end car sales to combat climate change. Remember what they said? By 2030, the Great Reset people, they said by 2030, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. They will own everything except you. They want to ban car sales to combat, quote unquote, climate change. Let's move on. It says, World Bank suggests banning motor vehicles. The World Bank is suggesting an end to the sale of motor vehicles in the latest psychological or I should say psychotically authoritarian Great Reset scheme from the globalist elite. Climate economist Baron Nicholas Stern, an influential British elite, spoke at the World Bank's Financing Climate Action Summit on April 21st, where he made his draconian anti-human proposal. Remember, transhumanism recreating it's an attempt to recreate re-engineered humanity into their likeness into their image no wonder we are told in the book of revelation 15 in revelation chapter 13 and chapter 14 a warning there from becoming and resembling the image and bowing worship the image of the beast Remember the Bible says, by beholding, we become change. This is the time when we need to be like 
the 144,000, as the Bible says, they follow the Lamb whithersoever the Lamb takes them. In other words, they kept their eyes. They were beholding the Lamb and they were being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ who is the Lamb that has taken away the sins of the world. Brothers and sisters, one more time. As they are trying to bribe us and trying to reinvent the economy. Remember, money does not make the man. The man makes the money. This is at such a time as this. We must say with boldness as well, we ought to obey God rather than man. And we believe that our God, amen, will deliver us out of your hands. But even if he chooses not to do so, we won't bow down to it. Let's continue. It says here, the right kind of policies, they went on to say, have to be put in place, including the abolition of fossil fuel subsidies, the advancement of carbon what? Pricing. Carbon pricing. Remember, they're going to tax the whole world just for breathing carbon dioxide. That's the same thing that happened. You can read that in Luke chapter 2. Prior to the birth of Jesus Christ, Rome taxed the entire world. And this is exactly what's happening. Prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's continue. It goes on to say, But clarity on time scales for decentralization of the grid. Clarity on the time scales for stopping the sale of internal combustion engine vehicles and so on. And then the article wanted to comment saying the great reset agenda to destroy freedom for humanity under the guise of helping the what? The environment. This is the rumbling of the Sunday law, brothers and sisters. Slavery. As Revelation 13, 16 tells us how they will enforce it in verse 17. It's slavery under the umbrella of climate change, which is really a call for Sunday sacredness. Now, speaking of climate change, listen to this one. Italy, to pilot social credit system for climate-friendly behavior. For what now? For climate-friendly behavior. Remember China's socialist system that they have there it is slavery let's continue it says the program which has been likened to china's social social credit system is slated to go into effect in september 2022 using a smart citizen what are the names smart citizen wallet app for cell phones in september we will start with a pilot project for the city at the center is the virtuous citizen, the one who, for example, separates waste well or does not waste energy or uses public transport. Notice, uses public transport. So, in other words, they don't want you to own anything. They want you to use their system of transportation. And then, if you do that, you get points. You now like a good slave citizen. Let's continue. It says, and does not receive fines or actively uses the Bologna welcome card. Mm -hmm. It goes on to tell us, the municipality will assign such citizens a score as part of a reward system with economic benefits to individual users. Bugani explained, citizens will have access to their rating, which can be improved for or by earning points that they may then spend on prizes such as rebates and cultural activities as a reward for their quote-unquote virtuous behavior. Mm, as a reward for the virtuous behavior. In other words, brothers and sisters, we will all be like robots. Remember, they want to connect us to the internet, the internet of bodies. So they, if they say left, you cannot question why left. You have to go left. If they say right, you cannot question that. You have to go right. But thank God for 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. As Paul tells us in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. With boldness, we must declare this. With boldness, we must say no to this. Let's continue. It goes on to tell us, Critics of the program, such as the Italian tech firm Privacy Network, which specialize in digital privacy, have warned of the legal, ethical, and societal or societal implications of such apps. These practices, if poorly developed or used, can lead to serious limitation on and violation of citizens' rights and freedoms, as well as discriminatory practices which are also achieved through technological means such as social credit systems or social scoring. One more time, read carefully Revelation 13 verses 15 through 17. It tells you exactly what we just read in different words, but it is the same application. It is a social credit system where you are being scored based on your behavior. And the Sunday Law movement is all about behavior. They say, this is how we want you to worship. And if you don't worship that way, you will not be accepted in society. And brothers and sisters, as Sister White says, the people will demand for the solution of the so-called climate change and the wars and the pestilences. And they are again with boldness declaring that we have to change everything. Even doing this, listen now, from Brett Bart, April 24th, 2022, self-sacrifice. What are the words again? Self-sacrifice. Climate activists, hell, men who burn himself alive on Supreme Court steps, social media, to hail him as a hero who performed a compassionate act of self-sacrifice. Climate activist Bruce set himself on fire in front of the Supreme Court on Earth Day. He died from this act of self-immolation. Heed his warning, they say. Listen carefully now. Take climate crisis seriously. Then someone says, this guy was my friend. He meditated with the so-called Our Sangha. This act is not suicide, they said. This is a deeply fearless act of compassion to bring attention to climate crisis. Brothers and sisters, the world is ready to persecute God's people. The world has been made drunk indeed by the wine of the papacy. Now speaking of making drunk or being made drunk, listen now. This says from Right Wing Watch, March 24, 2022. I am a 12th century man. This guy on the right says, White nationalist Nick Fuentes longs for the days of what? Catholic monarchy, crusades, and what else? Inquisitions. He said, I am a reactionary or a reactionary. I support autocracy. I am a 18th century man. The 18th century was what? Kind of epic. Remember 18th century? What was happening in 18th century? Remember the Reformation movement. Remember the Inquisition. Remember many that were being burned at the stake for not bowing to the people's dogma. Well, this man, again, who is a state representative at the same time, is calling for a return to Catholic monarchy, a return of the Catholic Crusades, a return of the Inquisitions. Well, remember what's happening in Ukraine right now? Zelensky, he's been wearing the Catholic multi-crosses. The Iron Cross, the Crusade Cross of the Roman Catholic Church. Listen now. He goes on to say, the reason why he's saying this. Again, one more time. The blue words up there, it says, the 18th century was kind of epic, he said. 
You know what democracy has given us? Question mark. And the answer is obesity, low rates of literacy. It's given us divorce, abortion, gay marriage, liberalism, pornography. That's what democracy has given us. What else? Ghettos and crime and political correctness, diversity. Yay. Another question. The track record of democracy? He answers, not so good. Then another question. What about Catholic autocracy? He answers, pretty strong. What else? Pretty strong record. Then Catholic monarchy? Question mark. He answers, Catholic monarchy and just war and crusades and inquisitions? Pretty good stuff. With boldness one more time. They are calling for the tyranny of Rome with boldness brothers and sisters also there were some people some faithful martyrs of Jesus Christ the Waldensians whom the word or the world was not worthy as Revelation chapter 12 tells us this was partly the fulfillment of this in Revelation chapter 12 where it described beginning in verse 13 it says, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Then it says, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the Waldensians partly fulfilled that scripture, the dragon cast water out of or against the woman. Remember, water represents multitude people. That was the crusade of the Roman Catholic against the Waldensians. But they stood fast, firm for Jesus Christ. Listen now. We read from volume 4 of Spirit of Prophecy, page 82, paragraph 2. The Waldensian missionaries were invading the kingdom of Satan. And the powers of darkness arouse to greater vigilance. Every effort to advance the truth was watched by the prince of evil. And he, the prince of evil, excited the fears of his agents. The papal leaders saw a portent of danger to their cause from the labors of those humble Waldensians itinerants. If the light of truth were allowed to shine unobstructed, it would sweep away the heavy clouds of error, the wine of Babylon that enveloped the people. It would direct the minds of men to God alone and would eventually destroy the supremacy of Rome. The very existence of these people, the Waldensians, holding the faith of the ancient church was a constant testimony to Rome's apostasy and therefore excited the most bitter hatred and persecution. Their refusal to surrender to the scriptures or the scriptures was also an offense that Rome could not tolerate. She, Rome, determined to do what? Blot them from the earth. Now began the most terrible crusades against God's people in their mountain homes. Inquisitors were put upon their track and the scene of innocent Abel falling before the murderous Cain was often repeated. Oh, brothers and sisters, and it will be repeated in these last days. As the Bible went on to tell us in the same chapter, verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon verse 17 says was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ that is us living in these last days brothers and sisters but thank God we are told as well in Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 here is the patience of the saints here are they 
that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, there will be a faithful few indeed that will keep the patience of Jesus, will have the patience of Jesus and keep his commandments and with boldness declared salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ. With boldness they will proclaim Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen. Let's pray. Loving Father God which art in heaven, thank you Father for reminding us that there is indeed nothing new under the sun. What we are experiencing here right now with the boldness of the elites of Satan happened before. But in every age and every time there was always a faithful few that also stood up for you and exercise boldness the freedom that they have in Christ Jesus so Lord this is our moment this is our turn now help us Lord to do our part in this great controversy to bring honor and glory unto thy name until the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his name we pray amen <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.